Welcome back, everybody. There's nothing worse than, you know, that little tickle you feel in your throat when you just know you're about to get sick. Well, our guest today says you can actually keep that from ever happening again. It sounds kind of hard to believe. Dr. Raymond Francis joins us live now from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hi there, doctor. Hey, how are you? Good, good. I'm so glad we could make this work out. So you have this book that's called Never Be Sick Again, and that sounds amazing, but it's hard to believe. Well, it may be hard to believe because we don't experience that, but it's true. And the thing is this, you know, here's what people need to know. The technology exists to not be sick. We already, the information we already have is sufficient to prevent and reverse this epidemic of chronic disease that we have in America. And as you pointed out, you don't even have to have a cold and I can tell you that I have had, in the past 26 years, I've had one cold, and I have a very good excuse for that one cold. So uh, <laughs> I'm 75 years old. I am in perfect health. Uh, I don't take any medications whatsoever. I have boundless energy. I have a clear mind. I don't have an ache or a pain in my body. I'm living proof that you can be, uh, that you can be healthy and you don't need to be sick. Now, I think I've kind of started to take it for granted that I'm going to get one cold every year, and I just I plan ahead for that, and I think a lot of people live like that. I can't imagine a life where you never even get a cold. How, what, so what are you doing? <laughs> well, um, I have to tell you, at age 48, I almost died. Uh, my death was a medical certainty, and I had to save my, use my own knowledge of biochemistry to save my life and then to restore my health. And that's what got me interested. Almost dying really got my, caught my interest. Uh, what I do, I changed my diet. I changed my lifestyle. I've learned how to eat good food. Uh, I take very high quality supplements. In fact, I had to, uh, I now make my own supplements and sell them very, very high quality. Um, I uh, get regular exercise. Uh, uh, I meditate on a regular basis. Uh, so in, in short, I changed my diet. I change my lifestyle uh, and I take very high quality supplements and that's why I'm so healthy. So what are some changes that all of us can take? Because not everyone is able to, you know, make their own supplements in their home. So what are some simple things that we can do right now to keep ourselves from getting sick again? Okay, well, simple things. You know, if you want to do one thing and only one thing, get off of sugar. Sugar is a deadly metabolic poison. Uh, and if you look at it from a biochemical standpoint as to what happens to you when you eat sugar, uh, I wish I had a blackboard here right now and I, <laughs> I, whole, I could fill a whole wall wow. with what happens when you eat just one teaspoon of sugar. Now what about the sugar in say like fruit or apple juice or something like that? Well, apple juice, no, but, but fruit. If you eat a piece of fruit, that's okay. A okay. fruit juice is not okay because you get too much bioavailable sugar and you get a sugar spike in your blood. But when you get a sugar, you can eat one teaspoon of sugar. Within two hours, your immunity will be reduced by 50%. And then people say, oh, I caught a cold. No, you didn't. You reduce your immunity and you then made yourself susceptible to an infection. So that's why I don't get colds. I don't get infections because I keep my immunity strong and I don't eat sugar. All because of sugar. So that bag of jelly beans we've been passing around here in the newsroom ever since Easter, that's something that's hurting us. Bad idea, bad <laughs> idea. Uh, yeah, you don't want, you don't want to do that. Um, uh, sugar, as I say, is a deadly metabolic poison. And what I mean by that is that it screws up all of your biochemistry. Um, just, just one or two teaspoons of sugar will throw your normal biochemistry into chaos for a period of six to eight hours. And that's not very much sugar. It doesn't that's sound like a lot. Sugar. You know, one, one, one cola drink has about 10 to 12 teaspoons. So you eat one to two teaspoons, your body is going to be in biochemical chaos for six to eight hours. Now, health is when all of your biochemistry is balanced and all your chemistry is working right. When you eat sugar, you throw that balance out 
for six to eight hours. So if you eat sugar in the morning, you know, put some sugar in your coffee or have a, a breakfast cereal with, with a contained sugar and then have more sugar at lunch and more sugar in the evening, guess what? Your body is going to be in biochemical chaos 24 hours a day. So what's, and, a, what's a good amount then to get on a daily basis? None. None? None, yeah. Uh, I'm in trouble. Baseball basically should be outlawed. Uh, we should not, uh, and here we allow children, you know, we don't allow children to smoke cigarettes. We don't allow children to drink alcohol, uh, but we allow them to buy sugar and eat sugar. Sugar is far more dangerous than alcohol or cigarettes. Really? Yeah, I was going to ask you, what do parents need to do? Because you're going to have a hard time convincing your child who wants candy right <laughs> now that that's not good for them. Right. I, I, I understand the problem. I'm well aware of it. <laughs> but um, you asked the question, what can people do? That's one thing anybody right. can do to improve their health. Sugar causes every imaginable disease. A, for example, Alzheimer's. Sugar is the leading cause of Alzheimer's. Uh, sugar is a major cause of cancer, a major cause of heart disease, a major cause of diabetes. Uh, this is, <laughs> you know, it's it's a major cause of colds and flu. Sugar is a deadly metabolic poison. Get off of it. Now let me ask you, how did you come to this understanding of sugar? Because if, if it's so bad, why aren't we hearing about this all over the place? A lot of, you know, my doctors never told me not to eat sugar. Yeah, well, your doc, nobody ever told your doctor, and your doctor is not doing the research to find out. And the sugar industry um, spend so much money on, on campaign contributions to members of Congress uh, that sugar is actually subsidized in America. Uh, it should be outlawed and it's subsidized. Wow, and, and it's hard to convince people not to eat it because it tastes so good. That's why we all love it, <laughs> you know? Now, it does I, taste good. I want to ask you, how does this all apply to allergies? I'm actually fighting some allergies right now. I don't know if you can tell, but, I'll, you know, I feel a little bit sick on a daily basis, and it's because of allergies, not a cold. Can you affect allergies this way as well? Absolutely. Uh, sugar screws up all of your biochemistry. You know, health is when all of your biochemistry is running smoothly. When you screw it up, you're going to get diseased, and allergies are just one manifestation of disease. So, uh, yes, you can even help allergies by getting off of sugar. What are some of the misconceptions you think then that people have about health and about staying healthy? Because a lot of people feel like, I'm working out, I'm counting calories, I'm going to be fine. And, and it sounds like there's more to it than that. Uh, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, and that's why I wrote my book, Never Be Sick Again. Uh, and really, everybody should read Never Be Sick Again because it tells you all this stuff. And it tells you how to stay well. It tells you how I got sick and how I got well and how you stay well. Uh, but basically, it's all about comes down to the cells. We're all made of these little bio, you know, little microscopic units of life called cells. And um, we started life as one cell in our mother. The average person is now somewhere around 75 trillion cells. 75 trillion. That's a lot. Um, but it all comes down to if every cell is working the way it's supposed to, you can't be sick. Gotcha. The only way to be sick is when a large number of cells malfunction. So your job is to keep all your cells functioning properly. Well, how do you do that? Very simple. You give the cells all the nutrition they need on a daily basis, and they have a grocery list of what they need. So give them what they need on a daily basis and keep them free of toxins that can interfere with the normal function of the cell, and then the cells will function normally, and then you can't be sick. So you see, you can, you can live a disease-free life simply by keeping your cells functioning normally. That sounds so simple when you say it. We do need to take a quick break. We have so much more to talk about. You actually wrote an entire book just on cancer, and I know a lot of people are going to be really interested to hear what you have to say on that. So we're going to take a quick break. Again, the title of the book, Never Be Sick Again. We'll be right back. Welcome back again. We've been talking with Dr. Raymond Francis all about his theories on how to never get sick again. And he's been telling us all about sugar. And, and Dr., you said sugar is really the key thing that people need to cut out, right? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So you also wrote a book entirely about cancer. And this one is really interesting because, you know, I've, I've had friends and loved ones who've gone through cancer and, and you feel really helpless when it's happening. Yes. Yeah. You feel, you feel like a victim and, and it, it's, it's like it fell out of the sky and hit you over the head. Cancer is our most feared disease. People, people are more afraid of cancer than anything. Well, yeah, it's, because it seems like it comes out of nowhere and it feels like you can't control it and it just targets somebody at random. It's, it's scary. It's scary, absolutely, uh, frightening. And, uh, and that's our most expensive disease. And yet we know how to prevent cancer and we know how to cure cancer. Uh, and it's fairly simple to do. We're just not telling anybody, anybody about it. How to cure cancer? Because I thought we're all, everyone's, you know, there's, there's always like a race for the cure and fight for the cure, and that's what we're trying to find. So what do you mean we can cure it? Yeah, well, all the research, uh, the research has been mostly wasted because it doesn't really get at how to cure cancer. Um, most of the research dollars go to uh, how to measure cancer and how to treat cancer, but not how to cure it or how to prevent it. And again, the technology, the knowledge to prevent and cure cancer already exists. All we have to do is teach it to people, put it to use, and that's why I wrote a whole book on it. Uh, my book, Never Fear Cancer Again, because you don't need to fear cancer. Uh, never fear cancer again, because we know how to prevent it, we know how to cure it, all we need to do is teach people how to do it. So what and is the cure? Well, we, we talked about, you know, in the first segment about cells, how about the body is made of these little microscopic units of cells. You cannot be sick unless cells malfunction. Well, when cells malfunction in a certain way, we get what we call cancer. Well, what is that certain way? That certain way is that the cell uh, is no longer metabolizing oxygen properly. So there is a deficiency of oxygen metabolism in the cell. When that happens, the cell turns into a cancer cell. So your job is to make sure that all of your cells are getting adequate amounts of oxygen and processing that oxygen properly. And then if you have cancer, uh, you have to, again, make sure that the cells are getting and processing oxygen, and then the cancer simply goes away and disappears. I mean, we have people who read my books with stage four cancer, people who were sent home to die. They're told by their doctor, there's nothing more we can do for you. Go home, call hospice, die. They read the book, they cure their cancer, and it's all gone. It's so simple to do. So how do you make sure that your cells are getting enough oxygen? Because I, I can't tell. I mean, my cells look fine to me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, they do look fine. Um, well, one, one thing you can do is to stop eating sugar. In okay. fact, you have to stop eating sugar, uh, especially if you have cancer. Uh, cancer cells eat only one food, and that's sugar. Really? So, oh, yeah. Oh, I and have they no idea. Eat tremendous amount of sugar. So if you eat sugar, you're feeding the cancer. So if you have cancer, you have to be off of all sugar. And if you want to prevent cancer, be off of all sugar. Uh, sugar causes cancer in many different ways. For example, we talked about the fact that sugar lowers your immunity, damages your immunity. Well, your immune system is your number one defense against cancer. So if every day you're constantly lowering your immunity because you're eating sugar, you're gonna make yourself more susceptible to cancer. Then if you do have a cancer cell in your body, the cancer cell needs a lot of sugar. So if you're eating a lot of sugar, you're feeding the cancer cell, helping it to grow. Then if you're eating a lot of sugar, uh, what happens is the body it declares an emergency. When you increase the sugar content of the blood, the body declares an emergency and shoots a lot of insulin into the blood. The insulin tells the cells to suck up sugar. So the cells do that. They go <laughs> and they take all the sugar up, but now the cell has too much sugar. And the, what the cell does is it produces a saturated fat out of the sugar, and then it puts the fat into the cell membrane. Well, when you put the, the fat into the cell membrane, you damage the ability of oxygen to get into the cell. 
So when you eat sugar, you damage your cell membranes, you uh, lower the amount of oxygen that can get into the cell, and now you may be creating cancer because you're creating an oxygen deficiency in the cell. Now we want to reiterate too, Doctor, what you mentioned in our first segment, which is that natural sugar is better, right? If you go for fruits, is that still okay to be eating fruit? Because we've all heard fruit is so healthy. Fruit is healthy. Uh, fruit juice is not healthy because now you're getting too much bioavailable sugar too fast. But eating fruit is very healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, for example, I'll tell people with cancer to drink a lot of carrot juice, for example, and say, well, don't carrots contain sugar? Well, yeah, there's some sugar in the carrots, but the carrot juice is very, very healthy. So something like V8 might be a good choice? Uh, no, not a no? good choice. Uh, because uh, you're, you're basically dealing with a lot of vegetables that are probably are, are very moldy and very old and just not healthy. <laughs> so you're taking a lot of unhealthy stuff and making an unhealthy drink out of it. Wow. I, I thought V8 was the healthiest drink you could go to. Now, we, we only have a couple minutes left, but uh, we want to talk about your other book, which is actually dealing entirely with weight loss. And this is something else you say that people can lose weight for good and not do it through dieting, right? Absolutely. You don't. You shouldn't diet. Dieting is very bad for you, uh, especially yo-yo dieting. Uh, lowers your immunity and can actually damage your heart, do a lot of problems. Uh, so what you want to do is lose weight. Well, the simple way to do that is to stop eating sugar. And I'm stop. starting to sense a theme here with the sugar. <laughs> Seems yeah. like that's the answer to all of these problems. Sugar is a, is a key. Um, you know, in fact, um, I talked once with a, a researcher uh, at Harvard Medical School, and, um, and I said, you know, do you think there's such a thing as a key to disease? And he said, well, probably not. But he said, if there was such a thing as a one single key to disease, that key would be insulin. Hmm. And when you eat sugar, you make your insulin go up. When your insulin goes up, you throw your body into chaos. You, you know, all your hormones are in chaos. Everything's in chaos. So um, sugar is very key. Uh, and not eating sugar is very key to, to making yourself healthy. And, um, and when you eat sugar, you make your insulin go up. Well, when you make your insulin go up, what happens is that gives a signal to the cells to not get rid of any fat. In fact, it tells cells to store fat. So when insulin goes up, cells will store fat. So as long as you keep your insulin high, the cells will store fat. So you, you, can't, you can't lose weight that way. The only way to lose weight is to stop telling the cells to store fat because the body manages this. The body manages everything. It manages your, your blood pressure, manages your, your temperature, manages your your blood sugar, and it, the body manages everything. It manages the amount of fat in your body as well. But it has a switch that, that, that controls it. It's like a thermostat. When you have too little fat, it'll say store fat. When you have too much fat, it'll say burn fat. So burn fat, store fat. You keep the fat in the body normal. When you eat sugar, you make the insulin go up. The insulin turns on a switch that says store fat. Gotcha. And as long as that switch is in the on position, uh, I have people that come to me and they say, I eat like a bird and I'm still gaining weight. But they're eating the wrong things maybe. That's right. That switch that says store fat is still on. So even though they're not eating many calories, they're still storing fat. Gotcha. I, I, I wish we could sit here and talk about this all day. Unfortunately, we are out of time. But if you're interested in any of these books, just check out the website. The title of the main book that we're talking about is Never Be Sick Again. And give us the website real quick, Doctor. It's beyondhealth.com. Beyondhealth.com. And we'll have that for you again.